Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new around here, I'm Shock. I'm a multi rank one challenge mid laner and a pro player for four years. In this video, we'll be going over Orianna and everything kind of like related to that. I think Orianna is a really good champ for basically every mid laner to know because she's pretty much always viable or strong. And she like teaches you a lot of the mid lane fundamentals that can transfer to a lot of the other champions. Uh, so it's a really good idea to pick her up. Let's get straight into it. So let's start out with Orianna's runes. So I think compared to most champions, Orianna has very cookie cutter runes. Um, and they're not going to change too much, so let's go over them. Pretty much every game, you're going to be running Sorcery with Inspiration. Um, and we'll start with Aerie, and we'll talk about Phase Rush in a bit. So starting out, uh, Aerie is the Keystone. Here, Mana Flow is the only real option here. Nullifying Orb just isn't really worth taking it. MR kind of just gets you more value if you reverse magic damage. And Nimbus Cog doesn't really synergize that well. Um, Transcendence is probably the best overall here, but you actually can make arguments for each of these. So Transcendence is the most consistent and the one you need to think about the least. Um, but celerity can have some uses um, if you if you're in a very skill shot heavy matchup so i use syndra as an example often taking celerity with um, time warp tonic is very useful uh, combining that with boots as well you get like tons of extra movement speed which is very useful for dodging abilities honestly if you're not like pretty high elo i probably wouldn't even worry about this but if you are looking to get that like little bit extra out of those really skill shot heavy matchups uh, celerity can be a good option Absolute Focus, I think, is a little bit under misunderstood as a rune. I think it is pretty strong in the early game, but it also spikes really hard when you get Rabadons because it provides you with like um, a little bit extra AP with the with the Rabadons passive. So it's kind of up to you. Uh, like if you want really hard scaling, I think it's better to, to like take Absolute Focus and pair that with Gathering Storm. Uh, but I do think Transcendence is like overall better for the mid game until you hit up that like Rabadon spike. Um, so I would take Trenton's most of the time, but you can make arguments for both the others. Now, here, it's mainly between Scorch and Gathering Storm. Water Walking is not super good on Orianna because her roaming is not super good anyway. Um, so Scorch, it does, like, add quite a bit of damage for you in the laning phase, and it works well with Aerie, you know, like, combining them both to really, like, poke the enemy down consistently. Um, but if you're not, like, getting value out of Scorch, like, if you're not using it to create a big lane advantage, or you're not, you know, like, just creating a tangible advantage out of it basically gathering storm will provide more like what is it like consistent or invisible power over the game if you have something like um absolute focus gathering storm or transcendence gathering storm um especially around that like 20 to 30 minute mark you will be like significantly stronger than someone that's taken scorch uh so definitely something to think about there uh, i i normally go with scorch because i feel like oriana in Soliki does have a lot of matchups where she can like build that huge advantage um, but it honestly depends like in a lot of matchups i will take gathering storm and if you just like prefer one over the other one like if you just don't really want to have to like really hard win your lane you just want to take gathering storm i think that's fine so for secondaries are pretty much always going to take inspiration there are some exceptions though and we'll talk about those um so first in here there's a lot of choices you have in here so the, the strongest early game and the best versus like skillshot champions is to take biscuits and time warp if you combine this with corrupting pot you will always have like the extra time warp move speed and it'll make a big difference in those lanes there are quite a few other things you can do though like you can easily swap out um biscuits for magical boots for example and that gives you a bit more scaling but in a lot of matchups it can be quite difficult to play without boots for the first like 10 or so minutes um so that's something you can do if the enemy doesn't have a lot of skill shots so you could opt to go cosmic insight again like a bit better scaling um, it's like quite good for the summoner spell cooldown on an immobile champion like having that flash is really nice other things you consider you could take futures market it allows you to rush like lost chapter in some matchups honestly guys like pretty much it's just like up to you what you want in here if you if you're not sure what to take i recommend taking uh biscuits time warp versus skillshot champions and maybe like um, boots cosmic if you're really greedy and otherwise you just kind of need to like understand what each one does and like maybe you can mix and match and see what works for you so when it comes to these uh shards down here you're pretty much always going to take attack speed you can go for ability haste which does give you again like a bit more scaling but in the laning phase oriana's auto attacks actually do like make quite a big difference uh and it also makes the thing easier so i really like the attack speed and then here obviously adaptive force and you can just take armor or mr uh, depending on the matchup so um before i get into these i'm just going to quickly talk about phase rush i think phase rush is pretty good on oriana it has been nerfed a little bit but oriana is one of the champions that like procs it the best uh, it's very easy to just a qwe or qw auto someone and get it like that so you can take this if you're versus champs that are particularly kiteable you know if they have a lot of melee champs um 
if they have skill shots that you really need to dodge um there are certain matchups where this can be an option like i think if you're say the oriana syndrome matchup if you're playing to like hard win this matchup you can take airy and look to poke them down on the other hand if you don't feel super confident in the matchup you can easily take phase rush and that allows you to like dodge a lot of syndra skill shots and close the gap if she misses a stun um so that's kind of like up to you there's there's situations where you can take phase rush there's situations where you can take airy but it's not a huge deal overall i guess phase rush is better scaling so if you lean towards that um you know that's absolutely fine so for the secondaries, um, the only other ones I really think are good would be precision secondaries and normally these aren't good for mages because mages don't make that much use out of these but Orianna actually can. So you don't really need presence of mind on Orianna but like there's nothing else really better to take. Um, and then you can take the attack speed or tenacity. I think these still aren't super good because in team fights you're not going to order that much and um, if you need tenacity like a lot of the time you might just have to position better or you might need merc treads so like this is an option but honestly guys i think inspiration is better like pretty much 99 percent of the time um there isn't really anything else i would consider taking like you can maybe make an argument for like eyeball with ultimate hunter or something but i i don't really think it's good i think if you just stick to inspiration secondary that's probably going to be your best overall now there are a couple other rune pages on Ori, but i'm not really going to go into them because i don't think they're good um, but I'll just make you aware of them. So there is like first strike Oriana. First, I don't really like it. There is spellbook Oriana, which is useful versus maybe Zoe or maybe TF. There's like maybe like two matchups in the game, and that would only be if you want to take um like TP and cleanse, like you want to swap to one of them. But personally, I think it would be better just to run one of the normal rune pages and um take cleanse with it. So just letting you know that those do exist. But personally, I think you can't really go wrong with sorcery primary and inspiration secondary. Oriana's items are similar to basically every other mage, not sure why there's three health parts there, uh, but basically for your starting items you have a few choices, you have the Doran's two parts and the corrupting potion, I guess I'll add that you actually can start tier as well. Um, so the way you kind of choose between this is tier is your greediest option if you just want the like absolute most scaling you can go tier two potions um, and this won't make you very strong early but it will mean after first and especially second phase um, you will be like you have a lot of extra mana and you can punish a lot harder with that and also it saves you from buying one of these starting items but i think it is greedy and you need to be very like very like confident that you're not going to get punished for it and also that you can't punish harder with something else the doran's ring this is if you really want to punish your matchup this is like um the strongest early game like if you're in a winning matchup you know you're not going to take much damage um you can start the doran's ring and you can look to really like pound your opponent with the extra ap with the extra mana regen so this is like if you really want to win early game hard you know you have a winning matchup this is a way you can like extend that lead corrupting pot is definitely your go-to if you have time warp tonic you should always be going corrupting pot i think if you're in a skill matchup or an even matchup corrupting potion is probably going to be the best for you um and if you're not sure what to buy i would just start with this it gives you the most sustain um and it's just like the easiest to play you don't really need to think about your matchup so if you don't know um just start with corrupting pot so for your early buys it does depend a little bit on what you're doing so uh, i think boots boots are very valuable in skill shot matchups um if you're not in a skill shot matchup though boots can still get some value because you can kite melee champions with them you can use it to roam around the map so overall boots are pretty op as an early buy um, but if you have magical boots obviously you can't buy them the tier is pretty nice i think tier is like one of the best early buys it's very cheap um gives like a pretty good amount of mana and obviously it scales really well Dark Seal is something you should pick up basically on every mage, but especially ones that are ranged because it's going to be very easy to keep those stacks high. And another reason is that Orianna can get like a lot of assists just through like shielding or speeding up her allies. Um, so Dark Seal, very nice to pick up early, but I probably wouldn't pick it up over the tier. Like if you have to choose between one, I think you pick up the tier. Um, but you can always pick up Dark Seal later, right? Like you don't just have to get it in the early game. Next, if you ever do get enough money or if you're just like building towards it, you want to pick up a last chapter. Once you get this, it allows you to pretty much like have infinite mana. You can keep pushing the wave, you can keep harassing. Just like gives you pretty much an unlimited mana pool and that allows you to do lots of things. Uh, it gives you a lot of control over your lane. So it's a really, really OP item. Next, if you are in an all-in AD matchup, you want to pick up Seekers. And the reason I say an all-in AD matchup is because there are some AD champions that are kind of built off just pushing you in and attacking your mana pools. So a champ like uh, Lucian, for example, can be like this, where they're just like spam shoving you in, they're like spam poking you down. 
Um, and you don't really have the mana pool to contest them if you build Seeker's Arm Guard first, like before you're a Seeker's, I mean before your last chapter. On the other hand, there are champions like Zed that just want to all-in you. You know, they, they can do a bit of poke, but they're not really attacking them. your mana bar. They really just want 100 to OU, champs like Zed, champs like Talon, uh, where the Seeker's Arm Guard is going to be a lot better for you. It's just really important that you don't pick this up at the wrong time, because if you do buy this, you're kind of accepting that you won't have mana, at least until you pick up one of the other items, or at least you won't have enough to like really establish control over the lane. Um, so it's very much like a neutralizing option rather than a winning option, which is why I think you should pick this up in those like difficult AD matchups if you're if you don't think you can bully them out by you know like just picking up raw AP or anything like that. Finally, we have Merc Treads. Merc Treads should honestly be seen as an aggressive option if you're against uh, an AP mid that's reliant on CC or just like reliant on um, like big all ends. Also, if you're versus uh, a mid jungle that are double AP, or if you're in versus a mid jungle that have double CC, Merc Treads gets value like in all these cases. So I think Merc Treads, they can be a very, very powerful buy. Like it allows you to um, get out of CC, it gives you that extra like tenacity, uh, it gives you the extra MR, you know, it gives you a lot to like play aggressively with. Obviously, you can use it to play defensively if you want. But the thing is, when you buy Merc Treads, it does allow you to be very aggressive in the lane, knowing that you're going to win trades. So I highly recommend picking this up if you're against um, a double AP mid jungle or just a mid with CC, champs like Syndra, champs like Zoe. So for your boot options, we've kind of talked about them already. There are a lot of times where you're going to be wanting to pick up those Merc Treads. Um, just to reiterate, like if the enemy mid jungle are both AP or they both have CC. Uh, worth noting though, if they do... Um, if they are double AP, but they don't actually have any CC, it can be better just to pick up the, what's this called again? Like Null Magic Mantle? Yeah, so if they if they do have like double AP, but no CC, it can be better just to buy this. The reason is it gives you the same amount of MR. So you're only really buying this for the like boots, move speed and the tenacity. So if you don't actually get value out of those, you can just buy the Null Magic Mantle and, and sit on it without having to build into these. Other than that, book choose are kind of your default. They're going to be the best most of the time, um, but you can pick up like lucidity boots if your team um, has like a ton of AP already. So, you know, they're going to be building like lots of magic resistance. The magic pen isn't as valuable. Or if you just base on an awkward amount of gold, I think it's fine to pick up. I don't think there's a huge difference between the two. Um, so, yeah, I think default to Sork Shoes and the other ones do have a couple of niche situations. So for your standard build, there are a couple things you can do. Personally, I believe the best build is to, um, obviously you buy a tier in the early game. I should probably put that here so you guys know. Not disappeared, but you guys get what I'm saying. Um, so get, now there's two tiers. So you get a tier, um, then you build your Ludens and your tier one boots. After that, um, go Archangels and your Rabidon's Void in whichever order you need them. So if you need um, Magic Pen, you'd probably want to pick up Void third and then Rabidon's fourth. Uh, otherwise, if they don't have much magic resist, you can just go rabbit on into void and finally fill out Azonias. I uh, will talk about it in the situational items, but if you do have a defensive item, it'll probably need to be somewhere in here or um, perhaps after the Archangels. Uh, but we'll talk about that a bit more. But this is like your basic, like highest damage. Um, you don't really need any situational items build. So for your alternative mythics, I think Leandries is definitely like pretty high competition with Ludens if they have like tankier members or if you guys have a lot of AP on your team already, the Andrews can definitely outperform. Um, so you, I think you can see Ludens as like a little bit better, but the Andrews honestly competes very, very well. And if you just like building the Andrews instead, honestly, I don't think it's um, like much different. Crown on the other hand, I think Crown, you have to be very specific about when you're buying it. I think this, like a lot of people I think see Crown as like, like really overpowered because if it's in the right situation like it gets a lot of value but on the other hand um if you don't get value out of the crown shield you actually lose like quite a lot of damage compared to leandries or ludens um so you have to really make sure you're buying this in the right situations if you are buying it honestly i think most of the time i would prefer to go one of the damage ones and then just go a defensive item instead uh but if you really like if you're against like a lot of champs that dive on you and for some reason like zonia's is either going to be too late or not getting you enough value you could go crown but i really don't like the item that much anymore i think it's just been it's just been kind of like outshone by some of the other items i will say the one thing it does have like going for it is it is reasonably cheap um so you can invest into it early and then go into like your regular damage build uh, but i personally think that a damage mythic into a defensive item is better if you need defensive stats uh, rather than the crown. Go so for these situational items. Um, so the first one is Medjai's. If you if you get your Dark Seal up to like eight or ten stacks or so something like that, 
Uh, the Magi's can be very, very valuable. It's very cheap and it counts as a mythic, like for your mythic passives. Um, gives movement speed, basically it gives everything Orianna wants. And like we said before, pretty easy for you to stack up because um, you, your range, you know, you can play away from the fight and you can also like easily pick up a lot of assists on everyone uh, just by shielding people in the fight. So it's very easy for Orianna to stack and keep this stacked, which is why I think it's really valuable. But honestly, it's valuable on pretty much every AP champ, but Orianna particularly gets quite a bit of value out of it. Next is Shadow Flame. So I've seen a lot of people building this in place of Archangels. So I've seen some people do, they do like tier Ludens, Sork Shoes, Shadow Flame, and they just never upgrade the tier into Archangels. Um, I think this is more powerful at that, that like two item spike. So if you really need a two item spike or you really want a lot of flat pen, um, I think that can be good. But overall, I think this build is better. And I think on average games in season 12, do go a bit longer so personally i prefer this like scaling build or something that scales like better after three items as opposed to like that strong two item spike um but you could definitely make an argument for it like just sitting on the tier and going shadow flame into rabbit um so it's kind of up to you if you really want that early game spike but overall i do prefer archangels after the price reduction and with kind of like the way games are going in season 11 or season 12. so uh for healing cut i guess i should put these together um in general, I think healing cut on mages is not super good, but Orianna actually is a bit of an exception because she makes pretty good use of Chemtech uh, Putrefire. So if your support's not building this and you really need healing reduction, it's actually like kind of wor uh, worth building this. And honestly, I would probably, if you're building this, I'd probably build it like with like either before or after your Archangels. I feel like just straight up replacing Archangels with this might be a bit too much but just bear in mind that like this is an option for you if you really need that like 60 percent healing reduction on the other hand if you don't need it that that desperately that you just like want some healing cut i think sitting on oblivion orb is always like pretty good like only investing 800 gold for the 40 percent um like previous wounds reduction compared to the 60 percent obviously but a full 2300 gold um i quite like sitting on oblivion orb i haven't built this item that many times but oriana is one of the better users of it and if you are going to build morello i would highly suggest building this instead so for the defensive items i think for defensive items on ori if you are going the build where you just sit on your tier you can literally just like build a tier and then replace this item completely um with a defensive item so you would go like tier loon sorks then like zonias or banshees into rabbitom's void and then like just fill out your last item with whatever you need um but otherwise i think you can you can just slot this in wherever so like basically just whenever you need it um you know you can go loot and sorks zonias tariffs etc um but honestly i don't think oriana is a champ that really needs defensive items a lot of the time i think uh, oriana has a lot of like tools available for her defensively already you know she's got movement speed reasonable self peel um he has a shield you know there's a lot of things going for oriana to where she's not as vulnerable as some of the other mages that being said zonia's all banshees can get you a lot of value you know if you're versus champs like zed or just like heavy ad teams zonia's gets a lot of value also some ap champions like fizz for example zonia's can actually be better than banshees um and then for banshees if they have like a really magic damage heavy team um but picking up banshees can be pretty nice but i think a lot of the time you can be pretty greedy on ori but yeah again if you do need it but it's somewhere in here and then just like build normally um, after that. For Oriana's summoners, you always want to take flash. Like as in a mobile champion, you just need it. So it's really like, what do you need secondary? Your default should probably be teleport. I think Oriana like makes quite good use out of teleport. Allows you to keep bullying your lane and you're not really a champion that wants to roam anymore. So, or like you can roam sometimes, but it's not as good as other champs. So you're not really punished for not being able to TP to other lanes uh, in the early game. That being said, you don't need to take this. Um, there are other things that can give value, like Cleanse versus CC, um, Ghost, if you're not sure what else to take. Heal is very good for mid jungle 2v2. Exhaust or Barrier, both good against like all in mids. So if you're not sure what to take, you can just take Flash TP. Um, but all the other sums are actually pretty decent on Ori. Um, so you kind of just like got to look at your matchup and see what you need. Uh, but overall, yeah, like Flash TP as your default. Okay, Oriana's abilities, we're just going to quickly explain them. Uh, they are quite like simple on face value, but they do have quite a lot of skill to them. Um, but let's get straight into it. First, Oriana's passive. Every time you auto attack, um, it deals your subsequent auto attacks deal additional damage. I believe that stacks up to three times. 
Um, but yeah, so basically this is this is going to make a big difference in the early game. It allows you to push the lane faster than other mid laners. It also means extended trades uh, generally go in your favor, both because you have like these um, empowered auto attacks and you're also because you just have low cooldowns. Uh, so extended trades can be very good for Ori, um, as well as like being good at poking, which is why Oriana is so strong in lane phase. So Oriana's Q, basically you move the ball from wherever location it is currently um, to somewhere like in the radius that you want. And what that means is that like, so for example, if it's on yourself, you can move it to there, but also um, the Q will go from where the ball is. So like, like this, like it doesn't go from your original position. Uh, worth noting is you get this little indicator of like how far away from, uh, how far away you are from the ball. Sorry, I don't know why that was so hard to say. Um, but yeah, so once it gets to red, the ball is going to snap back to you after you go out of range like this. Um, so Oriana's Q does do damage and it deals damage to everything it hits, but it also does less damage uh, per enemy hit. So if, for example, you're throwing it through the entire minion wave, the minion at the back will take less damage. And also the person, like if there's a champion at the very back, they will also take less damage. So Oriana's W, the way this works is it like does like damage wherever your ball is and it leaves behind this like field that speeds up allies and slows enemies. So you can cast this on yourself like this for an instant uh, speed boost, but you can always run back and forth through it. You can always, um, you can also just cast it on an ally like this. Um, and in the same fashion, let me just give myself some mana. In the same fashion, you can like, if the ball is on an enemy, you can W them for the instant slow. Oriana's E, uh, you can place this to give a shield on either allies or yourself, and the shield also gives resistances. Uh, it's pretty low resistances, like at low rank, but the more points you get in it, the more resistances they get. So later in the game, uh, this can actually be very, very powerful, but in the early game, um, it's not, it, it doesn't like do that much. I guess it is good for trading, like the shield itself is good for trading. Finally, we have Oriana's ult, creates a shockwave, a uh, pretty big radius around wherever the ball is also knocks enemies around so for example if i put the ball here you can actually use the r to pull them in the other direction uh, like this you can also alt yourself or you can alt off of allies so there's a lot of different ways you can use this and um, we'll kind of go over that in the tips and tricks section uh, so i don't think there's anything else you really need to know i guess the only thing would be the max order so you want to you want to max q then w then e and putting points in alt whenever you can one thing that is like sort of useful is if you're in a winning matchup it can be good um, to actually go Q, W, Q. So in a lot of matchups, you don't actually need E until level four. Um, but you do have to be like quite confident for that. Like I wouldn't do it in a lot of matchups. You just kind of like got to get a feel for it. The other thing you can do and something that some people like to do is actually start E in certain matchups as opposed to starting Q like normal. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I think it like kind of puts you on the back foot, but there are some matchups where you might want to take this at level one. Otherwise, just start with Q, then W, and then E, or you can go Q, W, Q. Okay, so let's go over some like basic combos as well, some tips and tricks. So the trade, uh, the combos you're probably going to use the most is a very basic trading combo um, that you can do. You can either go for an auto Q, W like this, uh, where you use like all those abilities at the same time. Uh, another way you can do this is you can actually Q, W, and E. So you'll notice that your E does damage like when it goes through. So if I pull the E back, it actually does damage. This can be pretty useful for adding that like little bit of extra damage to your trades. And it also can be used for CSing, especially under tower. Sometimes you can use the E to help set up the minions a bit easier for you. So yeah, like I said, basic trade combos, the QWE, uh, the QW auto. And also importantly, if you are taking phase rush, both of those do proc the combo. And you'll also see here that we can proc phase rush with the QWE. Those are some things people might not know first. Um, the Oriana ball does give vision of things. So like if you put the ball in a bush, like the enemy won't be able to see it, but you'll be able to have vision of the bush. Uh, so that can be very nice. It can also be used just for like checking areas like over walls and stuff. Um, so definitely think of the ball as like another champion sort of like you can do a lot of stuff with it. And um, that can be very, very useful. Another thing you can do is you can actually catch people off guard by hiding the ball in the wall. So for example, there are like certain walls on the map where if you put your ball in it, it'll effectively be invisible. Like obviously they can see it, but it's very, very difficult and that can allow you to get like big ults uh, as people walk by. Other walls this is very good at are these like base walls. Um, and there are probably other ones on the map, but these are definitely the ones I think that are most important, like the ones near objectives. So definitely like look for opportunities to hide the ball in the wall if you can.
Another thing that you can do is you can actually R flash. So if you R yourself and then flash, you can um, move your ult like this. There aren't that many opportunities that I've really used this, but like one that's quite useful um, that I've seen in a pro game is if there are people on the other side of the wall and you can't quite reach them because you've already used all the tools you have for moving your ball, you can look to flash the wall like this. I think one very niche thing that I'd like to quickly show some people, and I actually remember this from a game I played, um, so one thing that people do is, for example, let's say you're standing on like this side of the wall and you have a ward here and you have like an enemy AD carry here. And the, remember, I, the reason I remember this is because it happened to me. I made this mistake once. So if, you, if you're hiding and you want to get chunk as people come through, uh, what you want to do is you actually want to QW first, okay? So the reason is if you QR like this, right, they can flash the ult and now you have no ult for your team fight. Um, and if your ult hasn't hit, you actually won't have done any damage. So what, what you can do first is you can actually QW them first for the slow and then ult them. So if they flash, they've already been hit by the QW damage. Um, and also they, they like definitely need to flash because they're slowed um, to get out of that. So that's like a very niche thing, but just be aware that like um, if people are playing really, really well, they will look to flash your Oriana ult before a team fight because it's going to make you a lot weaker. Um, so if you don't want to give them that opportunity, you know, if it's just a one man ult, you actually can just look for the QW poke because it is similar damage um, to the ult once you've got some points in it, like obviously here, it's not really. Uh, but once you get some points, some more AP, uh, it is similar damage in the two combos. So yeah, don't just think about um, your ult, you know, you can be a bit greedy for it. You can look to get like bigger ult with it rather than just a one man ult. And I guess that is something like important in general. And we'll probably see in the team fighting is that oftentimes like a one man ult won't be enough to win a fight. Like unless it's on a very valuable target and you get like enough chunk on them that they can't do anything. Um, sometimes the one ult just like won't be valuable. All right, so let's get into Oriana's laning. First off, if you haven't watched my how to lane like Faker um, based on like an, it was like an Oriana Vex lane, I'd really recommend watching that. Um, either after this or before this. Either way, I think it'll be another really good example. Um, but let's have a look at this one. So I think Oriana's lane phase, it's very methodical. It's very chess-like. And you'll probably see from this like review how much I enjoy uh, laning in general. Um, but so this is an Oriana versus Syndra matchup. Very skill, very even matchup. Maybe very so slightly Syndra favored. Um, but honestly, I think you can just call it a, a skill matchup. You know, some people say it's Ori favored. Some people say it's Syndra favored. But I think, yeah, just overall... Um, it comes down a lot to like how well you like tether, how well you move, like your skill shots and stuff like that. So I'll quickly show you guys this game was actually against Curtis. Unfortunately, I lost the match. I kind of did play the mid game pretty poorly. But I just wanted to show it is actually against like a high level player. So starting off in the Ori Cinder matchup, um, I've gone for the early game rooms. I have the Corrupting Pot, uh, Time Warp and Scorch. I have Aerie. Um, I'm actually, I'm still not sure if Aerie or Phase Rush is better in this matchup. I feel like Phase Rush is slightly better, um, but Aerie can be pretty good too. I don't think there's a huge difference overall. So starting off, I'm getting pushed on this wave already. Um, and that's going to allow me to start harassing in the early game. Against Syndra, it's very much about like dodging their skill shots. And a lot of those, um, a lot of the matchups are like that as Ori. You can see there, uh, the best time to harass your opponent, just in general, is when a CS is like going to die. So you can see there, he threw a Q when no CS were going to die, so it was like fairly even chance that I would dodge it, you know. Um, especially, I think I'm a player that like moves pretty well in the lane phase, um, so I'm am going to be able to dodge a lot of these Cinder Qs if he like kind of throws them out at poor times. Um, yeah, see again, like I think he's wasting like quite a lot of mana here um, at times where it's not reasonable to expect to hit it against a good player. Um, so at the moment that is giving me like a little bit of breathing room and I'm going to look to harass him when the CS uh, do get low. Here he's a bit out of range, sort of hard for me to queue him here, I just want to keep my movement active. Uh, now that I'm level 2, I did look to um, like move into him, you can see I am dodging a lot of abilities. Honestly I overstayed this here, I should not have stayed for those extra autos um, and I stayed for a little bit of creep damage at the end. Um, so not a great trade by me, it did start off well though. Um, so you can see I'm slow pushing the wave to him. The reason is this gives me like time to harass him on the way in. Quickly pause here. So um, if you build a wave, it gives you time to harass him on the wave in. It also means that you're like level two and level three before them, which normally does give you some windows to harass. Here I have to be quite careful because he has this ball on the ground. So you can see it's very obvious he's looking to stun with it. So I have to play um, pretty careful around that. Again, dodging a lot of skill shots at the moment. And you can see like my harass, I'm going for it. Um, I'll just go back. So again, like... Um, I think it was this creep, was it this creep? Yeah, so actually, this is one thing. Um, if you watch that 
uh, Showmaker video, you probably know this, but sometimes in these like matchups, it can be worth like faking going for a CS in order to bait out a skill shot. So here, I know it's very easy for Cinder to hit a QE on me if I go for this creep. So I opt to move towards it, knowing I'm not going to get it. You can see I click back and we bait out the, the spell like that. You can see here, when he's going for the auto animation, I go for the QW on him. So he can't really dodge it. So at the moment, I am kind of just playing the laning fundamentals um, a bit better than him. Again, now I'm level 3, I'm going to be looking to harass, it was kind of a poor queue for me there, I could have waited for this to get a bit lower, but um, actually this is another thing. So when you are the lane bully, it, it's very good to stand like in line or close to a creep that's going to die, so you can see like he really wants this cannon, right? Um, and so I want to harass him when he goes for it. The ways that we can do this are if we stand near the cannon or like in line with the cannon, it means if he goes for an auto on it, we can auto or QW him. Um, or alternatively, he'll have to use a spell to CS it. Uh, but in that case, like it's going to be very easy uh, for us to punish that spell being on cooldown. So yeah, it was pretty good that we got that um, kind of like Q um, for free out of there. So here, as long as you get the E off when Cinder looks for stun uh, before sh before you actually get stunned, um, you'll you'll normally come out of the trade reasonably on top. Um, and Cinder will have to burn quite a lot of mana. You can see in general here he's being pretty inefficient with his mana. Like he's burned a lot of it, just kind of like. Um, like I've dodged it basically because he's been throwing it at somewhat poor times. So I'm going to keep looking for harass when he goes for these creeps. You can see I get another QW there. Something worth noting, noting is that you don't actually want to spam your W too much. If you use W on every single Q, you actually run out of mana. Um, so, you know, if your mana is above half, you can look to add in QWs. But otherwise, you can just be looking to harass with Q. Um, for simply put, it's, it's a lot, lot cheaper. So the wave's kind of pushing to me now. I'm still going to keep looking for that harass on every CS. This was sort of bad by me. I disrespected his level 4. Honestly, the trade didn't really go too bad, but it's more that um, I could have had a bigger health advantage if that had not happened. But actually, the wave's in a really good spot here. So if you can see on the map, Hecarim's actually in a really good spot to gank the Syndra. He doesn't need to be scared of a counter gank because Syndra's too low mana to do anything. Unfortunately, even though I pinged, uh, Hecarim did go bot, but this should be an opportunity where Syndra has to flash. Um, so you can see, like, if you can keep if you can keep someone low HP, low mana on this side of the lane, it makes them very vulnerable um, to jungle ganks. Obviously, um, junglers are not very skilled overall, so like sometimes they're going to make mistakes like that. Now this, oh, I'm really sad about this. So um, the lane's in a really good spot at the moment. I have like a health advantage, and I'm going to have a CS advantage after I CS all these. Um, and I can look to freeze the wave here. So he's got nothing. There's no way he can crash this wave. I can just hold it and make it freeze here and then TP back. Unfortunately, for some reason, I literally walk into a Nidalee Spear. Never optimal, guys. Would not recommend that. Uh, very bad play for me. And that kind of forces me to base uh, rather than to get a slightly favorable base here. So ultimately, after all that, kind of in the early game, um, not much has happened yet. But if if there's like some stuff I want you guys to take away from this, um, maybe I explained it better in the Faker video, so make sure you check that out. But I think um, the main things are, um, as a lane bully, as Ori, you generally want to be pushing the wave, like slow pushing it to your opponent. You want to try stand in line with the creeps, like looking to harass them every time they go for it. Um, and you need to keep your movement very active to dodge uh, enemy skill shots. And then, yeah, just making sure you know, you're in line with that CS, looking to harass them every time they go for CS. And generally, that will allow you uh, to come ahead um, in the lane as Oriana. So we're going to keep going here. On my base, I bought the uh, the boots and the MR. The reason I did this is they have double AP mid jungle. Um, and also Syndra is kind of like countered by movement speed and also by tenacity. So the Merc Treads Rush, uh, Merc Treads Rush is going to be very good for me here, um, which is why I opt into it. So coming back to lane, throw down my pink board, um, and I'm going to start looking to harass him again. I do need to be very careful though. Um, Cinder does kind of like win at this point in the lane, I think, before Orianna gets ult. Um, Cinder puts out like just a lot of damage at this stage in the lane, like when she has three points in Q. Uh, so I need to be very careful, just like make sure I'm I'm like dodging his spells and looking to get good harass on him, like when his spells are on cooldown. Lane's kind of in the middle here. I do want Hecarim to kind of gank, but he's like, you know, he kind of does need to farm a bit because he did spend his turn uh, ganking bot. These creeps are getting low, so I move up. He's forced to use a Q on it. Um, again, I'll probably keep looking for harass here. A very nice dodge out of me there. And uh, this puts me in a really good spot, actually. So I managed to dodge a lot of his spells, and he's very low on mana. 
a nice dodge from him out of there another good dodge from me so you can see this like it actually is just like a lot about dodging skill shots um it will come down a lot about your mechanics in these kind of skill shot heavy matchups um, but a lot of it does revolve around like using your skill shots at the right time. If you use your skill shots, you know, when like creeps are low or when you know they're kind of like in a fixed position, um, it makes them a lot easier to hit, especially against good players. So here, unfortunately, I think I lost a bit of XP uh, when um, Hecarim came mid just then. Uh, but we did get Ori's Flash, but um, I mean, Cinder's Flash, excuse me. So I'm not six here. Now, because Cinder is so low mana, I want her. I want to force her to base and make her miss a wave. Um, she is... Oh, I just missed a creep for some reason there. Um, she is going to try stay, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so she knows that if I burn mana on the wave, that I will be unable to all-in her. Um, so I need to be very careful about how much mana I use here. The reason is because she knows, like, if I use my full combo right now, I probably don't kill her. Um, I'm going to need to get, like, one more QW on her, or maybe just, like, two Qs or something. But... Because I know that she does want to stay on this low mana, if I just use like very efficient ways to clear the wave, if I just like spam auto attacks, if I just use my Q, um, just like try and keep my mana up, it is going to be, he is just like going to be forced to base eventually. Um, and that's going to give me like an advantageous item or like an advantageous buy. And that will allow me to start winning the lane a little bit more. So you can see I'm just like pushing this in really efficiently. Um, he's burning all his mana on the wave, which is gonna mean that he is gonna lose this entire wave here uh, so i believe i just push this in and just check yeah okay so i push that in he based um now i'm in a very good spot i get the merc treads i get the tear and the dark seal so i'm in a very very good spot at the moment um and you'll see that like once i come back to lane that the trades they're gonna start going like quite well for me so i think at the moment i'm only up uh what like eight cs so it's not um too big at the moment but we are gonna start like building that up quite a bit more now um so now we're at this point of the lane where we've got these Merc Treads and we can really start punishing the Syndra with our movement speed. Uh, you'll see I'm going to take very aggressive trades and I also have the extra mana with the tier. So I can afford to like use combos that are a bit more inefficient like the like the QW. So I'm using my prior here to get down a little bit of vision uh, just in the enemy jungle. So hopefully I don't get jungle ganked by I can't remember. I don't actually think I knew where Nidalee was at the moment. Uh, but either way I should be hugging to bot side. Okay, Nidalee actually killed the Herald so we know she's top side. Um, yeah, so here I'm again, I'm like standing far up trying to stand in line with the creeps that he wants to see us And we're just gonna be looking for those QWs and uh, dodging his harass like when he goes for basically Literally came from top side. I was forced to flash here I probably could have hugged down a little bit better and not been forced to flash there There is a little bit of a mistake and now we're even on sums like both Cinder and I have no flash um, But I'm gonna look to harass him quite a bit especially now this kind of wave state is sort of bad for him I'm not really gankable here and I also have a better like sustained all in than him so if he keeps pushing the wave up here it can be very dangerous for him um I can't remember exactly what happened here oh yeah so I think I used my R uh, just for a little bit of chunk and that was pretty good overall he has to use everything here to again uh reset I can't remember what I did with the wave here oh yeah so I actually tried to pull the wave and I managed to cancel his base successfully um which is very nice and I had a couple options here I think I yeah, I think I went and cancelled him. Actually, I actually can't remember. Okay, so I managed to cancel him and the wave is frozen. So this is a really, really good spot. He is too low to like walk up for this wave. Um, like he's basically forced to base. Um, unfortunately, the wave is not big enough for me to keep the freeze here. But because I know he has to base, uh, I can push it in. And I also like did threaten him there. Like he did kind of have to base or he was going to be he was going to be in a really rough spot. So I think that's like basically it um, for the like basics or I guess like basically how to play an Oriana lane um so this like what is this like a 20 cs lead um in an even matchup against curtis like curtis is a very good player if you guys haven't checked out his content you definitely should um now i went over a lot there so to kind of summarize it for you again it's like when you're a lane bully like Oriana, the most important things are how you position in lane like try position close to those creeps uh, and try harass them every time they go for a cs um also, like in a lot of these matchups, like playing around the enemy's cooldowns and like moving will be very, very important. Uh, I really, really recommend checking out my Faker, like how to lane like Faker video. It's on Oriana vs Vex, which is a much harder winning matchup than this is. So you'll see kind of like how to play those really aggressive matchups, um, how you can like really put people far behind if you're in those really good matchups. Um, so yeah, I think that's basically it for laning. Um, Oriana laning is similar to a lot of the other mages, but um and that that is kind of good in a lot of ways like 
it means that if you're good at laning on another mage, it'll probably transfer to Orianna. And likewise, if you get good at laning Orianna, it'll teach you a, a lot of those like laning concepts that also apply to um, many of the other like ranged champions, uh, mages, and like AD carries and stuff like that in mid lane. Let's quickly go over Orianna's team fighting. I feel like there isn't too much to say about Orianna's team fighting because it's very, very similar to like every other mage. I'll just quickly like summarize that for you. So the way Orianna team fighting works is you're gonna be like trying to be behind like your team generally. Um, you have a lot of DPS, so keeping yourself alive is important. And the main things you wanna do is like get the most value out of your abilities, like making sure you're using your Q, W, and E pretty much on cooldown. Um, to either shield your teammates and you know, speed them up, do damage. Um, but probably the most important thing is getting value out of your ult. And this is definitely what separates good Orianas from bad Orianas. So what you're like thinking about or what you should be thinking about uh, when you're using Orianna ult is you either want to hit like a bunch of people with your ult, just do a ton of damage like with your Q, R, W, you know, like all those abilities stacked on top of each other. Or um, you really want to try to get your ult onto a valuable target. And obviously, if you can do both, that's much better. But like, for example, if you only get a two man ult on like the enemy mid and AD, that can be like much more valuable than getting like a three man ult on like, you know, the enemy top support and jungle for, um, you know, three tanks. Uh, so you really do got to be like a bit careful. It's okay to hold your Orianna ult um, for a bit longer, but I'll just quickly show you guys like kind of how the team fight goes. So you can see I'm positioned like generally behind my team here. All the threats are over here. I know the two valuable people that I kind of like want to kill most again the mid ad um karma killers can can be valuable but i think like definitely the echo and the kaiser they kind of top of my list you can see i'm still behind my teammates here um but i do get an angle where i can get an alt onto their ad carry uh, so i take that and they kind of get one shot um i will show you guys a few more examples but i really think oriana in fighting in kind of it's like concept is is not too difficult you know i think it's, it's very simple you're like a, a back to front team fighter and you're kind of just like looking for those big alts um, kind of the nuances of Oriana team fighting is just going to be like your positioning in general. Um, it's not like unique to Oriana. It's something that's going to happen like every single fight. But we'll say like some things that can be useful or some things that might trip you up are um, now first off, you know, you can hide the ball in, in walls that can make um, ulting people a lot easier. Another thing you can do um, is you can put your E on someone that's engaging and that can allow you to get a big ult. Uh, one thing you do need to be careful of is if you E a champ um, like Rek'Sai, for example, and they um, go out of your range, obviously the, um, the E will snap back to you. And also if they become untargetable, the ball will also snap back to you. So for example, if you E the Rek'Sai and they, um, they ult in and become untargetable, uh, the ball will automatically snap back to you. So be very careful not to waste your ult like that. Definitely something I've done before. Uh, but let's take a look at a couple other teamfight examples. So here's a teamfight uh, that's going to kind of start the exact same way. You can So you can see I'm at the back here. I want to play behind my tanks. I'm looking for an ult on like valuable targets. And also just to put out as, mu as much DPS as I can uh, in a teamfight. So I'm playing back here. There's a bit of lag, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, so I'm just like hitting the knot at this point, but then I see an opportunity for a three-man ult. Unfortunately, two of them flash it, uh, but we do manage to kill the Karma. And other than that, all I'm really doing is like making sure to shield my AD carry or other people that are engaging and just looking for opportunities to deal as much damage as possible. Um, there are so many examples, guys, of Orianna team fights out there. I really think that you will gain more of just like understanding the key concepts of like team fighting in general, um, as opposed to Orianna specific team fighting. So again, to kind of give you guys guidelines, it's very important that you are maximizing your DPS and like positioning correctly in order to not die. Um, Oriana specific things are you want to try, um, you want to try get an alt onto multiple people if possible, ideally valuable targets like the enemy mid and AD. Uh, but if you can't do that, if you can just get a big shockwave like on a lot of members, uh, that can be quite good. I think other than that, yeah, it's just going to be like general team fighting stuff, you know, like assessing the enemy threats, you know, stuff like Nautilus Hook. Um, stuff like Lee Sin Kick, for example, in this game, and just making sure that you're like positioned directly behind your teammates and just, um, you know, playing on your limits to where like you can deal as much damage as possible. Again, I think this is something that like um, it might just like take practice for you guys. And also, I would recommend checking out um, my other guides and just going to the team fight section. So, for example, like I think Cassiopeia's team fighting is quite a bit more difficult than Oriana, but there might still be things in there. Um, that you can kind of like learn from or might I think like Cassiopeia is a champion that punishes poor team fighting quite a bit more than Oriana um, so yeah definitely check out my other guys and go to the team fighting section and maybe it'll help you a little bit as well okay guys so let's talk about the matchups um, some champs I haven't put on there because I like either haven't played against them or I just like never see them mid 
uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, now, one thing in general about Oriana is she is a lane bully. She does win most of her matchups, and also just like she's a very well-rounded champion, so she doesn't get hard countered as much. Um, and so in that sense, like champs that can be considered very hard, I wouldn't even consider to be like that hard, you know? Like I could maybe even delete this entire tier and just like put them in the hard category. What I basically mean is these champs are kind of harder than the rest. In fact, I'm actually sort of tempted just to put Victor in with these and just like delete this all together. I think in general, um, Oriana, like just, she's just like one of the strongest mid laners in the game in the laning phase. And um, compared to a champ like Cinder, like Cinder is very strong in lane, but Cinder also has like some harder counters. Um, whereas Oriana is at best soft countered. Um, so let's kind of like, let's take a look at the matchups. I think in general, um, Oriana is very good against champs that uh, lack any form of sustain and also lack ways to get on her. Uh, but she also is good against some of the assassins that manage to get on her. Um, the things that you're mainly going to find difficult are champs that can poke you from extreme range. So like Victor, Azir, and Zerath um, are all considered like pretty decent matchups into Oriana because they can kind of like play out of that range of constantly being harassed by the ball and also they have quite a bit of wave clear so they can't just be spam shoved under tower. A lot of the assassin matchups will depend a lot on the jungle matchup. So like champs like LeBlanc, um, Oriana wins 1v1 but if like LeBlanc gets a ton of ganks um, or same with Fizz, you know, champs like that, uh, the matchup can become very very difficult for you. On the other hand, a lot of these matchups if you do fall behind, say against like a champ like Vlad, a champ like Zoe, um, if you do fall behind, you know, if you do make those crucial mistakes, it can be very, very difficult for you. Champs like this up here, like Kassan and Zed, I feel like for most people, these are actually going to be fine matchups. It's, I think that like, unless you're versed like a, at least for me, unless I'm versed like a high challenger Zed one trick, I wouldn't consider this to be that difficult. But again, it's one of those champs where like, if you fall behind against it, it can be really hard to come back in the game. Um, and also it's a champ that makes your build path very annoying, you know, having to go that Seekers instead of mana and then Kassadin. I feel like Kassadin is it's like it's like a really weird champ like you you get a lot of prior over him and you can like bully him a lot early so from that point of view like Orianna is pretty good in the Kassadin um but a lot of the time in solo queue like Orianna is not that great at roaming she kind of like influenced the map a ton in the early game so like Kassadin can just like safely farm under tower and he just kind of like reaches that like ticking time bomb point um and where he can just like get out of your ult with his ult at any point um so I kind of consider that somewhat difficult. Um, to be honest though guys, like I don't want to go too in depth into all these matchups because I do think that like most of them Oriana does just win. Like she, Oriana naturally has the advantage, like she can push most lanes, she can out harass most lanes. Um, if there is a matchup on here that you kind of like disagree with, honestly I'd like to hear it. And also if there are matchups that you guys don't understand why they're there, we just don't um, understand how to play them. Like feel free to either comment below or ask me in my Discord, you're more likely to get a quicker response in Discord. But yeah, in general, Oriana is a very good blind pick. She does win most of her lanes. Uh, she does have a couple difficult ones, but not ones that you're going to encounter too often in solo queue. But overall, uh, she's just a very strong laner and like really good in general. So guys, that is it for my Oriana guide. I feel like this might not have had as much in it as some of the other champs. And I feel like that is because Oriana is a champion that rewards like the fundamentals of League. And I think that is why like she is such a good champion to play if you're like um somewhat new to mid lane or you're just like wanting to improve your just like mid lane fundamentals in general um she's not a champion that has like a super specific niche or like tons of mechanics you need to learn she's just a strong champion that like builds on the fundamentals that you have um and she's like good in like basically every meta pretty much every game um so she is like quite valuable to have in your champ pool again if you have any questions about anything in the guide um, please leave me a comment below or alternatively like join discord um, and at me in discord and I'll probably reply there It'll be a bit quicker. I'm pretty sure um, Otherwise guys, just thanks for watching again. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Hopefully I'll be putting out some more content soon uh, So yeah, I really appreciate you guys like checking out all the videos it means a lot to me. I'll see you guys next